Good morning, everybody. How's it going? We are having technical difficulties. I don't know why it is, but it seems like Mark came on and there was an audio problem. And then Shane's trying to come on and there's an audio problem. Luckily, I know these systems, so um, not the tech side of things, but I definitely know the presentation side of things. So he's going to be trying to log on. We kind of start at four or five after, as everybody knows. Anyways, the people have been on here. My first time catching this live. Katie, welcome. We are live all the time. Some people think these are pre-recorded. They are not. Debbie, hello from Canmore. Yeah, for those of you that are on here, it's your first time. Uh, we always ask where everybody's from. Just nice to get uh, an outreach and um, where everybody's coming from. So, again, everybody say there. Andy, what's up, my man? Andy from Saskatoon. Andy, I know about, I don't think about four or five months ago, you taught this, and I said you packed your calendar. You better be doing this shit still. Good morning from Toronto. Autumn, good morning from Alabama. See, now they're coming in. Lisa, Tennessee. <clears throat> Brian, what's up, man? Taylor Cox, Washington, California, Winnipeg, Toronto. Shelly from Cincinnati. That one would sting. Uh, Cleveland. Nice, Katie, I passed state. Testing Nationals March, congrats. Keith from Prittis, just outside Cali. Curtis, Dallas, Fort Worth, Clara. Is from Clara. That's fantastic. Hopefully that's a city. Otherwise, if not, that's fantastic. Angela, Delaware, Damien, Florida, Las Vegas. Clara's from Calgary. That makes more sense. Good morning from Vegas. Lisa, it's about time. Oh, my God. Holy shit, did that take you forever. Love you, though. Uh, Cassie from Texas. We got a lot of people. I don't know if Shane's going to make it. John, what's up? John, hopefully everything's going okay with you since last time we met. Kais, my man's there too. Shelly, I don't know if you knew this. I was actually, for those of you that don't know, I'm probably a little bit not great right now. I was at the Waste Management Tour in PGA, and then I decided to have a fantastic idea. And I went to the Super Bowl on Sunday. For those of you who do not know that. I was actually at the Super Bowl, Shelly, so I know you're still probably a little bit jealous, but I decided to fly out to the Super Bowl on Sunday and got that going. So I see Shane is back here. We'll see if his audio works. Is it working? Oh, yeah. Nice. Oh, look at that. I thought, I thought I was muted forever. That would be fantastic, as <laughs> your wife. <laughs> yeah. Man, see, here's the thing about people on my team right now. Shane's lost a bunch of weight. I don't know if uh, Steve's on here. Steve's lost a bunch of weight. I know Corey's lost a bunch of weight. I'm still sitting here being a fat mess. So uh, these guys are uh, two weeks before. We're obviously not the inspiration me. for you. What's that? Yeah, I know. <laughs> so it's starting now. So I'm going to go the no booze train for a little bit. Didn't you learn from last time? See, Shane is looking good. See, it's not just me. Yeah, I'll I flew back to Canada. It's fine. I got COVID in the United States. I'm like. I got that a month ago. I was stuck. I was a refugee for 11 days, for those of you that don't know that. And then I went back to the United States, and I was able to come back because I already had COVID. So it was fun. Um, okay, Shane, there's lots of people on here today. It looks like we got a good crowd. So I know this is a very important topic. I'm going to introduce myself quickly. My name's Brad Vandewal. I used to run the number one team at the number one REMAX office in the world. Uh, now, recently, uh, switched to EXP. Last year, we did uh, 1,250 homes. In January alone, we did 335. And this month, we'll probably do another 300. So we're looking on pace to hopefully do 2,000 this year. So again, the reason why I tell you that, for those of you that haven't been here, is I know what the fuck I'm talking about. Now, if I don't, I'll just tell you I don't. There's a lot of people that come on here, like a TikTok coach or an Instagram or YouTube. All those people, they're fantastic. However, I do not know anything about them. So my business partner, Shane, who's also one of my best friends, in my wedding party, when was the last time you had a drink, bro? June. I know. I'm so proud of you. You're like the only person <laughs> I thought that could never do it besides me. So congrats, man. You're looking good. Um, so Thanks. I'll let you introduce yourself. I know this is a major part of your business, like major, mm -hmm. major. Maybe talk about how long you've been in real estate, how many deals you did like this last year, and, and how, how it's still a major part of your business. And then we'll uh, we'll kick this off here in about a minute. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks so much uh, for the introduction. So yeah, Shane Voth here. I... Uh, I mostly work with with builders. And Calgary's got kind of a unique 
uh, building process where they tear down an old house and they build two houses where the old house was and they call them infills. And so a big thing that the builders are looking for me for is, is to find them land or properties to tear down. And so I'm always trying to be out ahead of the competition. I can't just wait till something gets listed on MLS, especially in this market, it gets listed on MLS and it's multiple offers and it's a crapshoot if you're going to get it or not. So they really rely on me to get properties to them before they hit the market. And so I've got a bunch of different strategies that I do in order to, to find that. This is one of the big ones that I do. Uh, you know, last year I did over, over 90 sales. This accounted for about 30 of them. Uh, but every time I sell one of them from this, it results in two listings the next year is the way it works because they're going to buy this old house now. They're going to tear it down. They're going to put up two, you know, 1.1, $1.2 million houses where the, the other one sat. So it's, it's a big portion of my business. Um, today, I wanted to talk a little bit about consistency because, you know, I've, I had a, a bit of a rough go. I, I had COVID just, uh, you know, not that long ago, had some family things. And if, if you don't have a consistent routine, when you run into trouble or you run into a rough patch, you're going to give up right away. And, and that's one thing that like, I've been very consistent at doing this for a long time for years and years. I just, it's part of what I do. It's always there. So even when I hit a rough patch or I don't feel like doing it that day, or I don't have the motivation of someone yelling at me to get after it that day, it, it still happens for me because I've got that consistent routine. And I want to make sure that anyone that commits to doing this, make sure you're committing a decent amount of time that you're going to stick to this because if you go out and you do it once or twice it's kind of a crapshoot are you going to land a bunch of deals or you're not it, it this works 100 percent, it works i'm proof of it it works all the time but you got to stick to it and you got to you got to keep going with it and, and if you run into trouble that's where the coaching's here for if you have if you're like oh i'm getting these objections i need help that's when you come back to us and you're like, what are, what are you guys doing to be successful? I'm saying this. What are you guys saying? Right. Don't give up on it because realtors start new shit all the time. Right. They're like, oh, this is the new shiny thing I'm going to do for lead generation. And they do it for like a week or two. They don't close a bunch of business at it because honestly, they probably sucked at it because they haven't practiced. They've never done it before. And then they give up on it. And then they go after the next new shiny thing. Or they pay someone for a bunch of leads and then they don't call those leads, right? Um, you got to you gotta stick to it for a bit. Um, also, I'm going to drop my email in the chat. Uh, I've got a couple things. I've got the multiple offer strategy and a platinum home purchase plan that I want to share with you guys as well because it, it really ties into what I'm doing. You know, with the getting listings from landlords, it's so much about finding properties before they go on the MLS. And if you want to work with buyers as well, uh, that that uh, platinum home purchase plan is amazing because people are, they got FOMO, right? They're like, I'm missing out on stuff. There's properties that I'm not getting. And you got to take advantage of that FOMO that people have. And when you let them know that, you know, I love throwing other realtors under the bus. You know, I'll be like, oh, does your, does your realtor get off market properties for you? Do they, do they get stuff from Facebook groups? Do they work with wholesalers? Do they, do they have a list of, of uh, properties that, uh, that landlords would sell if they don't find a tenant? Does your realtor have any of those things? Right? Just love throwing them under the bus because, of course, they're going to be like, well, no, my realtor just sent me stuff on MLS. What, what do you have? Oh, well, you know, in order to get what I have, you, you got to sign a buyer's agreement with me and work exclusively. That's the only way I work, Right. Um, and it, you, if you want to get more listings, you do also have to have this kind of repertoire of stuff for buyers, because most people that go to sell their house, the first thing they do is they start looking online or doing open houses and seeing what is out there before they actually list their house. Right. And so having a strategy to attract those kind of people is really key. Um, we've also got a few other strategies, like I said, the multiple offer strategy. I've also got a seller protection plan. So anyone that wants any of those things, make sure you, uh, you send me an email there. I'll get it to you and, and help you guys out, but I'll, I'll dive more into, uh, the listings for landlords here.
Do you have, do you have the slides or you want me to pull it up? No, I got it. Okay. There we go. That's up, right? So getting listens from landlords. Obviously, we're in a tight market. I, I don't think there's anywhere in the universe right now that uh, that has a lot of inventory. I think everyone's fighting for the same few listings. So you need to be out ahead of people. And so this is a strategy that I've used for, for a number of years to quite a few deals out of it. And like I said, every time I do a deal from this, it's like doing three deals because I get two more listings from it down the road. So real quick about me, uh, I was top producer on the number one team, number one Remax in the world. Uh, came over to EXP last year. I've got two young kids, uh, great wife, very supportive, and you know I've uh, experienced in new construction work mostly with builders. Uh, really fits the lifestyle that I try to do. I love working with listings. Uh, you know I like the fact that if I'm going to my kids hockey game I don't have to run out and show houses I can still negotiate a deal and get that listing sold right that's that's one thing I love about listings is you can really work them from from anywhere and how many how many deals did you do last year Shane uh 90 and how many buyers did you have in your car last year uh I, I did one I had a referral from a, a oh. builder that I work with and then Not uh, bad. one out of them. 90 okay that's yeah. pretty good <laughs> That's pretty yeah, good. Yeah, and I, they did not get in my car. I've never had someone in my car. That's true. Actually, hours. I did like 13 years ago, but I guess you didn't have to drive and meet anybody. So needless yeah. to say, you can scale your time for sure. Yeah, and that's the thing. If you want to scale your business, it's it's difficult to scale it with more buyers because, I mean, the amount of time, I think it's like on a listing right now, you might spend 10 hours of work to then get that listing sold. Where buyers, you're looking at probably 50, 60 hours, right? Yeah. It, it's just the amount of time that it's going to take to get that buyer and educate them and, and through the pre-approval process and showing them houses and inspections. And like the list goes on. Like if, if you want to, if you're selling 30 homes right now and you're like, I want to do 60, it's going to be hard to add 30 more buyers into that mix. You're, you're going to have to focus a little bit more on listings. Um, so again, why listings? You probably heard you know, that, uh, you know, signs lead to more signs. And what does this mean? Well, when you get listings in a neighborhood, people see your signs, they start to feel like you're the expert in the area, right? Um, it's that social proof. They see that you're the busy realtor, you know, doesn't, they don't even pay attention if you're the one selling those listings, or if you just got a bunch of signs out. I know realtors used to go out and they wouldn't even have open houses on and they would just drop open house signs pointing where at whatever direction, you know, doesn't matter. But honestly, that just creates that social proof in people's mind that this is the guy to use in this neighborhood. Right. And that, that works well for me because I work mainly inner city in Calgary. And so people see my signs over and over and they're just like, they know me, they know our brand, they know us. It gives me some street cred going in right away. It also gives you opportunities to hunt for more business. Right. If you're going to do cold calling or door knocking or doing things, you've got the advantage of I just listed in your neighborhood. Oh, I just sold this in your neighborhood. You know, it's it's having that that street cred and being able to turn it into more business. And if you have a team, having more listings is really helpful, too, because the amount of sign calls, open houses that can be done. It, it's a it's a great way to scale your business. So how do you find listings? Well, you can run seller leads. You can try door knocking. You can try cold calling. Uh, you know, they all work 100%. I mean, they, they're tried and true methods that, that will work. What are the downside to finding sellers? Well, typically using seller leads are very expensive. And you know what? If you don't have a great system of follow-up and if you're not really, really awesome at closing that person, uh, you know, you're going to be wasting a lot of money on these seller leads, right? And especially if I think the national average is people that sign up on websites sign up on, I think, 10 of them. So now you're competing with nine other agents. Every time you talk to someone, you better be scripted. You better be ready to go. You better have a really good routine when it comes to talking to these guys, because there's nine other guys and just one of them has to go out and promise to throw away half their commission or do something you're, you're, you're fighting with other agents. And that's, that's not a place of business I want to be in. 
Uh, not that I'm afraid of competition. It's just that you, you get some asshole that decides that, oh, I'm going to, you know, I'll give half my commission back to you. Right. And now all of a sudden they come back to you and you're, you're forced to, to try to show your worth, why you're worth double someone else's. Downside to cold calling and door knocking, they're very time consuming with limited results. You know, I used to do a lot of cold calling. I did door knocking. Uh, you know, it was it was great when I needed to walk off a hangover years ago when I was drinking or something, but <laughs> it's, uh, it's, not, uh, it's not the best use of your time, right? Cold calling, I think in an hour I would hit like 100 people uh, I would talk to 10 of them and out of those, maybe one would turn into something where you're like going to have a follow-up call, right? It's an hour and you're talking really to one legitimate person. It's it's not the best. And, and door knocking too, people don't, nowadays they don't want you knocking on their door and in their face and chances of uh, being able to close them. And, and they're probably not even the homeowner. They could be just the renter too. So where can you find a list of people that own homes that may consider selling? So in, in Canada, I use Kijiji. There's a site called Rent Faster. I know Craigslist. Facebook Marketplace is is super hot spot. Uh, I've been using that a ton lately. Um, I honestly don't even know what Hot Pads is, but someone might. And <laughs> local that, Facebook groups. That sounds a little pervy. Hot Pads? What is that? Yeah. yeah. I don't know. Maybe you could find people that want to sell their homes on, on Tinder as well. But uh, I stick to things that I know like Kijiji and Rent Faster. And like I said, Facebook Marketplace is unreal for the amount of people that you can talk to and just the way that it, it filters through Facebook Messenger. Really good uh, for getting leads on Facebook. Hey, Shane, go back. The other one I thought of randomly, I think uh, Russell was on the call. He's from Kelowna, is people, if you want to go in, <clears throat> some people are tired of having their Airbnb and don't even know what it's worth. Go on Airbnb and just ask if they've ever thought of selling their place. So think of how many people there are in your city with Airbnbs and just say, hey, look, I'm not looking at renting your place because you can send a message directly to the owner and just say, I may have buyers for this home. Have you ever considered selling? So there's another free one for everybody that's not on there is, you know, VRBO or Airbnb is just ask them if they want to sell. A lot of investors are fucking sick and tired of tenants and being like, yep, get me out of here. I don't want to do this. So. Um, you know, we, I think we're listing two or three this week alone from this strategy from people that are tired of tenants or the tenants trash the places. And now that the market's up, they just want to sell. So Airbnb and VRBO could be a good way of doing it too. Well, that's why being consistent at this is so important. I, I can't tell you how many times I've, I've talked to a seller and they're like, no, you know what? I got a great tenant. Don't want to sell. I'm, I'm fine. And then you, you keep following up with them. And all of a sudden it's my tenant just left me high and dry or the last tenant was a nightmare, or whatever it is, right? It, it's about being consistent with this, because you never know when all of a sudden they're going to be in a crunch where they're like, you know what, I, I would sell this house. I'm tired of this. You know, this last week, I had to spend, you know, two or three days over at the property because the, you know, there was complaints or the, by, you know, at, as a landlord, and, and this is where I always play into things, right? Is, you know, as a landlord, if, um, if the renter isn't cleaning off the snow or if the renter, you know, was parking cars of the, where they're not supposed to, it all falls back on them. Right. And you have to remember, these are all headaches when, when they're buying the rental property. Of course, we never <laughs> want to tell them all the headaches. Right. But when you're talking to them, you are just putting in those little seeds of doubt, right. That, uh, you know, that they're going to have to deal with these headaches. Right. So where can you find a list of people that own homes and may consider selling? So rentals, you now have their phone number of the actual owner of the rental property. You know, that's either vacant or the tenant is about to leave. And with that, add stress might get them to the point where they were motivated to sell, right? That's the thing. You never know when uh, a lot of people become landlords and they're barely just getting by with the rent every month. To pay it and if there's going to be vacant for one two three months maybe the last tenant caused a bunch of damage and they've got to try to fix it up and they just don't have the funds to do that so you never know when someone's going to get to the point where they're like i'm done with this rental right and now here you are you've got a phone number of someone and you know that it's either vacant or it's about to be vacant which is going to be stressful for them finding tenants is 
I mean, it, it's not a fun job. You know, that they're going to have to cycle through all these people. They're going to have to interview them. They're going to have to call. They're going to have to check things. You know, it's, it's not fun. When the place is totally rented and they're just getting a check every month, probably not a lot of stress on them. They're like, it's going great. But all, whenever it's time to put the place up for rent, that's always going to be a stressful time. And it might be just enough. And especially in this market where you can go to them and be like, you know what? You can cash out of this right now and, and you're going to make a lot of money. And then you can go and do something else. Maybe the property, you know, and sometimes, honestly, this turns into where they actually just don't even want to sell that house. They want to buy more rentals, right? You, you don't know where this is going to lead. Well, I think that the well, big thing that we talk about, Shane, that whenever, whenever you're talking, remember one guy, I remember you calling him whenever we first started doing this. And so I remember this, you know, whenever we were, you were sitting in the office and somebody's like, well, you want to know what? I don't want to sell this house, but I actually might sell this one. So then yeah. what we started doing is we started asking, you know, if they're like, no, I don't want to sell this one. It's like, would you sell another one or do you have any other ones? And we've sold a bunch of homes from just asking the simple question is, do you have another one? Or like you've asked before, do you want to buy another revenue property? So think about that. When you get a hold of somebody, they're going to answer their phones because they're looking to rent it out. So one, your response rate or your uh, the pickup rates higher. Right. And then you ask them if they want to sell this house. If they have a different one they want to sell or if they want to buy another one, that's three opportunities you have to sell a home to somebody. Well, it's a big thing. Like landlords typically, I, I would say the average own own more than one property. Yeah. Right? And so you, that's the big thing. And, and especially with the script that I use talking about when I get into the script a little bit, you'll, you'll see the point that I'm coming from where I'm working for my buyers. When that landlord hears that, they get FOMO. They're like, what? You go out and find properties that nobody else has. How do I get? How do I get on this list, right? And it, it piques that interest. It's just, it's. I love using this script because it it really gets people going as far as seeing that you're a hardworking agent, that you're different than other people. It's so you know, I've I've had rentals where they call and they're just like, hey, do you want to sell? Hey, do you want to sell? It doesn't add any value. When you see the script that we use, you're going to see why this works and why it leads to more business, more than just potentially that one because people people have FOMO and they're going to be like I, I want in how do I get into this Shane so big misconception is everyone's doing it the truth is they're not I mean I know they're not um, most realtors are number one they're lazy um, number two they don't practice and so if they are doing it they're probably doing a terrible job of it because they don't uh, they don't work on their scripts they don't work on being consistent at it you know, when the market's tight, they might try it for a month and then they're going to give up on it, right? There's very few people that are going to do this consistently. If you do, you're going to be in the, that top percentage of realtors because that's, and that's where you want to be, right? You, you don't want to be where everyone else is. And this is not where everyone else is. So this is what I say. I say, hi, I'm looking for the owner of the home for rent. This is Shane Voth with eXp Realty. Reason for my call is we provide our buyers with a list of rental properties we consider selling if they don't find a tenant or if the price was right. We'd like to include your property on this list. Would you consider selling if the price was right or you didn't find a renter? So the reason I love that script is we're hitting them up as if we're working on behalf of our buyers. I'm, I'm not saying, hey, I've got a buyer that wants to buy your house. I'm saying, Look, I've made a promise to my buyers that I'm going to bring them everything available in the market, not just stuff on MLS. I'm talking for sale by owners. I'm talking rental properties that would sell if they don't find a tenant. I'm talking about foreclosures, uh, distressed properties. You know, I, I've told them that I'm going to bring them everything that's available to them. And that with by making that promise, I have to do things like this and, and try to find properties that would consider selling if they didn't find a renter, right? Uh, the reason that's so powerful is it's going to completely disrupt that landlord's thought of what a realtor is doing. Because if you just call them and say, hey, do you want to sell? He's going to be like, here it is, just another realtor doing the same thing, trying to make money off me. Like, forget it. Hang on, Right. When you call and you're adding value, saying that, like, this is something I do, this is a promise that I made, you're setting yourself up as looking like a true professional, right? Because they're not, uh, 
they're going to be completely surprised, right? And number one, you're following through on a commitment. You said, look, this is a promise I made. And so I'm fulfilling it. Well, that's going to completely blow their minds because that is not what they expect from realtors. Because honestly, I know, Brad, you talked about this last time. Most realtors do not do what they say they're going to do. Like how many times have you called another realtor and whether you're, you're buying something for yourself or your clients or whatever it is, and they tell you, oh, I'm going to get you. Oh, don't worry. I'll send you that email later today. Right. And then later that day, no email. And you follow up the next day. Hey, man, uh, you were going to send me that info, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. It's going to come today. And then they don't send it. Right. Well, this is what most realtors do. They're inconsistent. They're not professional. They don't do what they say they're going to do. And so the public, that's their perception of what we're going to do. So when you do the opposite of that, when you've made a promise and then you come through on that promise, like they're going to be blown away and they're going to be like, okay, this is someone I want to talk to. And maybe they, like Brad said, maybe they don't want to sell this house. Maybe they own another one they want to sell. Or after hearing about what you've got a list of properties that, you know, rental properties that we consider selling, like, you know what, I'm, I'm actually in the market right now to pick, pick up another, you know, another couple properties or whatever it is, right? Uh, you've got to stay on top of all the potential business that you can get out of this. So down here, I just mentioned about it's a promise. I always, I love saying that it's a promise that I make because that just, just shows you that how professional you are, that I made a promise and I'm fulfilling that promise. Uh, from there, I say, hey, you know what? I just need to schedule 15 minutes to view the home, and get it in front of our potential buyers. When's the best time to preview the home? Days, evenings, or weekends? And these are just some uh, extra things I put in there because sometimes you might get, I wouldn't say objections. Mostly it's complaints. Like, oh, why do you have to come see the house, right? Well, whenever I get that one, why do I have to come see the house? Well, you know what? My clients trust me as a professional to bring them only verified information. I don't want to waste their time or your time by showing them houses that don't fit their criteria. That's why I need to go in and verify this information first. So I use that one again, just using the fact that I'm a professional, the people that I work with trust me to bring them only correct information. Look, I don't want to send them this property. Then I show up and it turns out that, oh, you know what? It's actually not a full bath. It's only a half bath on this floor. That's something that's going to make, you know, upset my buyers because I've promised that I'm going to verify all this information first, right? And if you need some upsell, I tell them, oh, you know, we pay for buyer leads, trying to match sellers with buyers. We've got over 10,000 people in our database receiving listings from us. You know, I never say I have someone who wants to buy this house. I always put it out there, the fact that we have a bunch of buyers. They're looking in this neighborhood. And on behalf of them, I'm trying to find out all the available properties for them. That way, later on in this process, I'm going to be able to turn it into a listing. If I go in and say, oh, I've got a buyer who wants to buy this house. And then I show up and it's just me. And I never introduce a buyer to the place. They're going to feel like, oh, this is too much bait and switch, right? So I, I'm just careful with the way I say it, that I want to get this in front of our potential buyers, right? I never say that this is the perfect property for them. So here's a little bit about that promise that I make. So I tell them, well, when we send, sign a buyer to an agreement, make a promise to not just provide them with MLS listings. We also commit to providing them all of the available homes in the market area. That includes for sale by owners, pre-construction, and landlords like yourself that we consider selling. I'd love to include your home in our database for these buyers. When's the best time to preview the home? Days, evenings, or weekends? That, that days, evenings, or weekends, Brad, is that I love that one. Because how do you say no? To that? Learned, I learned that from Joss from Dan Plowman like 12 years ago where yeah. a lot of people ask, well, can you go at like Tuesday at 5? And if they can't, subconsciously, they're slowly shutting down to you, right? Because it's like, no. They're like, well, can you then Wednesday at 3? No. They just keep saying no to you subconsciously and actually to you where if you ask them what's best to meet days evenings or weekends there's no other option it's day evening weekend that's it yeah and it gets them saying like at that point and it's also it's it's an open-ended question it's not a yes or no right, right. if you say hey how's tuesday at four 
it's either a yes or a no. And you don't want that. You want open-ended. You know, what's best, days, evenings, weekends? That's going to get them talking. Well, you know, at the weekends, uh, I don't work, but I have some events with the family. But I, you know, it just gets them talking. And, and you get more information out of them, which, I mean, that's a big thing before I go to any of these appointments. I come stacked with info on these people so that whatever presentation I'm going to bring to them, it's completely tailored to what they want to hear. And and that's how open-ended questions are the way to go. Like I hate yes or no questions. Like it, that, they just don't work on the, on the phone with someone that you don't know that well. Right. So again, why the script works sets yourself apart from your competition we show them how hard you work on behalf of your buyers, you show them what they can expect if you work for them. By providing them with value before ever asking for anything, you disrupt their thoughts about what realtors do. And when you change their thoughts on this, it puts you in the driver's seat to control the conversation, right? When you call them and you just follow along with what they're expecting, they're gonna run the show. They're only gonna give you the info that they wanna give you and you're gonna get shut down pretty quick. As soon as you disrupt them from that, now all of a sudden you're in control. Now you can start asking questions like, how long have you owned this property? Do you own any, own any other properties in the area? You know, how long has it been rented for? How was the renter? How much, you know, how much rent were you getting? You know, how, you know do you manage your own properties typically? You know, like you got so many questions that you can answer that are not yes or no questions. Right. And once you're in the driver's seat, you can go through all those questions and and really get tons of info. Like I I love seeing people's face when you do a presentation for them and you hammer on the points that they already told you that they wanted to hear, but they, they don't remember it that way. Right. Like when you're doing this and you're talking to them and you ask, like, oh, you know, how long ago was the last time you sold a property? How, you know, how was that transaction? What did you like about the realtor that did it? What did you not like about what they did, right? You know, when they ask, you know, they say something like, oh, well, marketing is really important to me. Well, tell me a little bit more about what, what your idea of marketing is, right? Because sometimes people will be like, oh, I think open houses are the best. Or, you know what, um, I, I don't think open houses work. I, I really want a lot of social media, Right. And if someone's like, oh, I want lots of social media, when I go in to do my presentation, I'm like, oh, we've got Instagram, TikTok, and Facebook. We do leads on, you know, uh, every every single platform there is, right? YouTube, you know, we do all this stuff, right? And they're just going to be like, oh, this is exactly what I was looking for. Well, of course it is. You just told me what you wanted. And now I'm just bringing it to you. But that's why you have to follow these scripts. And you've got to got to make sure you're asking all those questions. So setting the appointments, the key to the call is setting an appointment. And in order to do that, you have to create enough value for them not to cancel or stand you up, right? There's a lot of people out there that are really good at getting someone to say yes on the phone. Uh, maybe they're just pushy on the phone and they're like, no, we got to meet. We got to meet. I got to get this appointment. And but then the person cancels as soon as they're off the phone or they just don't show up to the appointment, right? In order to if you're getting a bunch of people booking appointments but not showing up, it's because you're not showing enough value for them to not cancel. Because we've all done it. We've made plans with friends. We've, you know, oh, we're going to go to this party. We're going to do that. And then you get home and you're like, well, I don't really feel like going out, right? Or in the beginning when you talk to them on the phone, they're like, oh, this sounds pretty good. Yeah, yeah on Saturday I'll, I'll get up in the morning and I'll meet you over that rental. Then Saturday morning comes along and they're like, I don't really want to do this anymore, right? If you're getting that, it's because you didn't create enough value for them to show up. You have to make sure they understand what the true you know, importance of everything that you're going to bring to them so that they don't stand you up at that appointment. Being on a free list is not enough. You have to build the value by emphasizing the entire network that you have available to you, right? If, if you're just telling them, oh, I, I want to come by and check this out for a buyer that I have, that might not be enough, right? But when you start building value of, you know what, we've got thousands of people that are, are on this. You know, we've got tons of people. I'm part of these Facebook groups with over 5,000 other realtors. I've got access, you know, our YouTube videos get over, 
you know, a thousand views, you know, whatever it is that you can do to build up value about what you have available is going to help with making sure they stick to that appointment and make sure you're leveraging things. Like I said, like Facebook groups, other realtors in your network, online leads, anything that you have available to you that is going to seem like value to a seller, make sure you tell them. Don't just assume. And we do this with referrals. I'd say when people get referrals, they always become super lazy, right? They don't show value. They're just assumed that they're going to get it. And I don't know about you guys, but I'm pretty sure this has happened to many people where they've got a referral. They don't bother going through everything that they can do for that person. And next thing you know, that person ends up working with a different realtor because we were just assumed. We just got lazy, right? You can't get lazy. You have to make sure. And don't just tell them, show them, right? Have a presentation ready. Show them like that you're part of these Facebook groups. Show them that you have access, that realtors are calling on you all the time looking for stuff like this, right? Make sure you're showing them as well, not just telling them. Biggest objections you're going to get. And one thing I'll, I'll say, make sure it's an objection and not just a complaint. There's a big difference. And I think realtors love to jump on complaints. You know, when someone says they're busy, it's not an objection. It's a complaint. You just have to let them know that, you know what? I expected you to be busy. And that's why I wanted to find a convenient time that works for you in order to do this, to save us both time. When's a good time to meet? Days, evenings, or weekends, right? All I did there was acknowledge that they're busy. That's all they wanted. Most people, Brad, how busy are you? I don't know. Everybody thinks I'm busy, but I don't complain about it. <laughs> Normally. Right? But you know what I mean? Like, yeah. What are you? You're running 11 different companies. You got your, your team selling 300 a month. Like you're, you're super, super busy. Yeah. But if there's a good enough opportunity, you, you find the time to do the meeting. And that's the thing. Like so many people, like, they, they maybe they work nine to five, they, they don't have anything going on the weekends, but they still want people to feel like they're busy. So they're like, Oh, I'm really busy. I just don't know when we're going to be able to meet just acknowledging that they're busy and letting them know, like, I knew you were going to be busy. And that's why I wanted to find a convenient time because I don't want to waste your time or my time. What's best days, evenings or weekends, just by acknowledging it. I didn't turn it into an objection. I didn't turn it into something bigger than it was it's just a complaint so make sure that you, you can recognize the difference don't treat them like objections until you know it's actually an objection treat it like a complaint and just acknowledge it and then move on only when it becomes really apparent that this is actually something you know i've had people be like oh you know what your commission is so high and you're just like yeah yeah i know i could see how people feel that way so are we ready to sign this? And people are like, yeah, you know what I mean? Like don't people, otherwise realtors will start being like, well, I have to pay this many fees to the, this come and I have to pay this to my brokerage and I have this and I have to do that. And, and so by the time I get, you know, this $12,000 ends up being $2,000 to me right now, you've just, the guy was just wanting to complain. I've had it before where you're just like, you know, yeah, it's a lot of money, but is this the last, you know, is this the first or the last time you're going to end up spending more money than you want? And people are like, oh, I know I always pay more money than I want. And then they go and sign the contract, right? Just acknowledge people's complaints and move on and close on them. In here, the biggest objections you're going to get is why do I have to meet? And again, I, I just, I put it on being the professional. I've got to verify everything. This isn't on MLS. I, there isn't another realtor who's come in and verified all these results and I can send this to my clients. That's my job to do because this isn't listed. I'm busy, can you just look at the photos? I understand you're busy and that's why I want to save time by verifying the info ahead of time. I don't want to inconvenience you with people that are not a good fit for the property. When's a good time for me to come? Days, evenings or weekends, right? At the appointment, ask questions and listen. I don't go in selling them at that time. I'm not going in and being like, oh, I've got this and that. And I'm just asking 
question after question. I want to know so much about this property. I want to know what their pain is, right? Find out. Like, maybe they've had a nightmare tenant. Maybe, you know, maybe they've sold, maybe they haven't sold a house in many years. They don't know any realtors, right? Maybe they sell all the time and they've got a guy in their, you know, back pocket. Like, you got to ask a lot of questions when you get to all their pains and why they want to sell, it's just going to make the close so much easier. A lot of people want to rush in to do the close, but the easier it gets with more information. So make sure you're asking tons of questions. I think it's fun too. Like how long do you own this property for? And they're like, I remember one lady, she's like, I've had it for about 10 or 15 years. I'm like, wow, what'd you pay for it back then? She's like 400. It's like, and I knew the house going to that. I was going to so that one in Mount Pleasant, Shane, like three years ago before Infill Hub started that I couldn't double oh, my, yeah. when I made my yeah. first call. And then I'm like, oh, it's probably worth at least six now. And she's like, what do you mean? I'm like, well, I, one, I think one just sold down their own for six. And she's like, well, I would sell it then if I could get six. Like she just had no idea what she could even get. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, that's why it's so important to ask, ask questions, right? Cause it just gives you all, the weapons at your your disposal to be able to to close on them because you know if you find maybe they're underwater maybe they bought it and it's worth less money than they paid um but maybe there's other opportunity like you gotta make sure you know what you're going in there to, to i guess fight against in order to uh to close on them big thing with this like anything and every realtor thing it's follow-up that's where all the money is is in the follow-up I mean, maybe you're you're a rock star. You show up once to one appointment, you close them, and you never have to call these people again. Probably not. It's it's always in the follow up, right? And so many times, people are afraid to follow up. Maybe the first call didn't go great, right? Uh, Brett, how many times have you had it where you had a call and it went terrible, and then you called the same person back two weeks later, and they have no memory no collection. They have I no idea. Remember one time I was trying to prove a point on how shitty our fucking team was at lead gen <laughs> and an ISA that we had this one lady, she put in there, this lady's a total bitch. She will never list her home. I'm like, fuck this. I'm calling this chick to see if she's actually that bitchy. And it was like two weeks later. I swear on my dog, this lady had, I ended up talking to her. She was very cold. Didn't tell her I was like from the company or anything. Now that she'd remember she had a home to sell. She wanted to do a late community. Like it was like $1.8 million worth of listings that we had from literally somebody saying my ISA at the time said, this lady's a fucking bitch. She'll never buy. And I was just like, okay. And I'm, I was just trying to prove a point because our agents can't close a fucking door most of the time, let alone a lead. So I was pissed off. I'm like, I got to call some of these people. Well, and that's the thing is like we, you don't know. The first time you call them, you you don't know when, like you're interrupting their life, right? Like if I'm in the middle of trying to cook food for my kids and like one of them is being annoying and the, the other one's for sure being annoying, <laughs> like, like and, and you get a phone call then and you're going to be like, I don't want to deal with this right now, right? Now, maybe an hour later, all of a sudden they're sitting there and they're like, oh, I, like they've just a total different mindset and you catch them at that time. So that's why the follow-up is so important is because you never know when you're talking to them. Cause it's not like they they're sitting at a desk waiting for you to call and they're like, I'm all prepared. Okay. And, and you call them and they, they have the perfect conversation. Like you're interrupting their life. They might be in the middle of pumping gas or they're, you know, maybe they just had a shitty day at work. Like you don't know what it is. And that's why the follow-up is so important because if you're following up with them, you're going to hit them at a time where it's like, you know what, this is an opportunity I'm interested in. Or, you know what, I don't, I don't want to buy a house or I don't want to sell, but you know what, I have a friend that wants to, right? You can't get to those opportunities if you're not following up. If you're just calling one time and then throwing that lead out, you're, you're throwing away a ton of money. Do you remember the black book you made me have in Kelowna? No. <laughs> oh, 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 when I was teaching you, oh, that was good. That was so, fun. And, and this, this taught me a big lesson in follow-up because so every, what I did is he forced me to go back and call people that I didn't follow up with. And every time someone had bought or sold, I had to write it down and write down a dollar value of what that didn't turn into. And like, it, it makes you want to puke if you do that. Yeah. <laughs> but if you do that and, and now you understand the value of follow-up, you're, you're going to follow up with people. 
right? And that that's the lesson in it. It, it wasn't, uh, you know, it wasn't to be cruel. It was like, look, you're throwing money away by not following up. And just because the first call you had was not a good call, or maybe you, you fumbled all over the call. And like, I literally remember you one time called and you fumbled, you fumbled that call like the worst I've ever seen and hung up. And then you literally called them right back, right back. and laughed yep. about it. Yes. And, and the person was like, they, they just never had had that happen before. Right. And so then, you know, I'm uh, not sure hilarious. what it, it I remember that business it, or not, I but. totally, totally messed up that whole call. And I was like, that was awful. I'm like, I'm calling this person back. And you're like, what? I'm like, what are they going to do? Hang up on me? And then we actually had a good conversation. They didn't have to buy, but we laughed about it. Yeah. And that's the thing I think people have to, to realize is like, don't overthink things. Don't be like, oh, last time I called them and, and they said to not call them for six months. Do not wait six months to call no. that person. Like, do not even close, right? Uh, it just, you can't, you can't follow those, you know, the, and even that rule of, like people say there's a rule of them following up in half the time. You can't even do that. I mean, honestly, you need to get to a point where you're following up with these people to the point where it's like you're almost almost annoying, right? <laughs> I was, and honestly, like for the builders that I ended up like, I, I work with a ton of builders. They all thought I was annoying in the beginning. They all told me to stop calling them, or at least stop calling them so often, right? I, some of the builders that I work the best with now and do a ton of business with, literally, were saying. I have a realtor. Don't call me anymore. You need to stop. Like, please just, just stop doing it. And I remember the one guy, I called him and he was like, look, I'm, I'm skiing right now. I'm out with my family. He's like, you seem like a nice guy, but you need to fuck off. He's like, you got to stop calling me. Leave me alone. This is too much. Like, I have a realtor. I'm happy with everything. Great. I called him back like a couple of days later and he was just like, okay, you know what? fine let's meet i gotta see what this is about because know, like you don't get a point this is too <laughs> right like you yeah. just don't get it right and and you know he, he's he's annoying guy but whatever like it's it's a ton of business for him so um that, that's the thing or your line remember. where somebody said yeah because you were trying to find builders and shane had ripped so many builders away from other realtors by showing more value one realtor's like yeah, you want to know what? I already have a realtor. And Shane's like, we work with 25 realtors. They all said that the first phone call too. Yeah. Right? All... You're basically like every, oh, we have 25 builders at that time that we were working with. All yeah. 25 said they had a realtor too. And now they're working with us. You should probably meet us before, you know, before it's too late. Yeah. And that and that's the thing, like when, you, when you're consistent at this and you're doing it over and over again, like you're going to have that confidence to say things like that. If you only make these calls once in a while, you're going to get an objection and you're going to panic, right? But if you're doing this consistently a couple times a week, it's going to turn into a ton of business for you because you just, you become so good at it and that you can almost anticipate how the calls are going to go, right? Versus picking up something new every time you're like, oh, there's something shiny over here. Let me try this. Oh, let me try that. Like this works. You just got to stick to it. So how to convert it to a listing? Again, following up. Um, one thing that I always explain to them is, look, I've shown you how hard I work, but I'm only one agent. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, you got to let them know that there's, you know, maybe there's 5,000 other agents in your marketplace. And in order to unleash the power of the entire market, we need to put this property on the MLS, right? That's that's your ultimate goal, typically. Like, I a lot of times sell these to an end buyer that I have. And, and you guys may have that ability, too. If you've built a good network of buyers in an area, like, you may be able to double-end a lot of these, like I do. Um, if you don't have that big list of buyers, you need to be able to convert this into a listing, which in this market is a paycheck. Let's be honest. Listings are paychecks right now, right? So I always let them know, look, I put in a ton of time on this. I've brought this through our entire list, but you know what? I'm only one agent and there's 5,000 other agents in our marketplace in order to unleash all the power of the market. Let's get this property listed and let's get this house sold. You can go to the next one. Cause I talk about it later. Okay. So again, 
big conclusion is targeting rentals is really effective and it's cost efficient way to build your listing business. I'm cheap. I don't like spending money on leads that I don't need to. Like this literally costs zero dollars, which blows my mind when people don't do it. They'll go out and pay money to get the phone number of a seller from an online lead, but they won't call a seller that you have their info and it's free. Right? <laughs> like it, it blows my mind, right? This that's why this is so golden because any any marketplace, it's so easy to find their information. You don't have to go knock on doors, you don't have to go cold calling. The numbers are printed, they're right there. You know they're you know they're the owner and you know that they've got some stress coming up. It's either vacant or will be about to become vacant. So you got to get on those ones. Okay, we will. I think it's about it. I think we will do a quick Q and A here. So for those people that have questions for Shane, we're gonna take two or three minutes to go over Shane. Then you're gonna transition over here pretty quick. Go ahead, Shane. I answered pretty much everything else. You can start at the top. Uh, can we get a recording? How can I get in contact with builders? That's a whole session. So, uh, Abigail, that's too much to explain right now as we're running out of time. Uh, can we get a recording of the session? It'll be sent out in the next 24 hours. It's only good for 24 hours. Uh, Shane, go ahead. Where do you find it? On Kijiji, it's mostly realtors. Uh, well, on Kijiji, well, I find there's a ton on Kijiji. You can filter just so that it's, uh, you can choose by professional or by owner. And same thing on Rent Faster. It's pretty like typically when you click on them, you can see it'll it'll show a management company. So the, and I, I did this. Um, I can't remember. I think it was uh, Hillier had a, a realtor that was like, "Oh, I'm getting nothing but management companies." And then we went down. We went on the internet and we went through these. And I showed her, and I'm like, "There's still a ton." I find apartment condos tend to have a lot more management companies because it might be the entire building, right? Uh, I find detached homes are, are typically a lot less of the time have professional management companies, but Kijiji, Rent Faster, like they typically say, and you know what? And if it is a realtor that you get on the other line, like whatever, just say, hey, maybe we'll do a deal someday. Thanks a lot. Bye. Or, or if they're managing the property, be like, you know, maybe you do have a buyer for it, but no, the, you, the, a lot of people, that's people's complaints on this is like, oh, there are going to be management companies. If you actually sit down and go through, they're, they're not. Uh, i got a question. Someone who's committed to a realtor but is not getting enough help from his existing realtor. How do you build up value? Um, well, if they, if they love your service but they still don't go with you, then they don't love it enough. I mean, that's, that's the truth of it. Right. I mean, if they're, if they're sticking with their other guy, even though they say that you have more to offer, you don't have, you haven't created enough of a gap for them to leave. And you got to remember that you can't match them or just be a little bit more value because then the people are going to take the easy route, right? Like there's a lot of things in our life we can think about in this way that like, Switching phone, let's think about switching phone companies, right? How many times you've been like, oh, you know, there's a little bit, little bit better deal over there, right? But then you're like, ah, I got to change phone companies and I got to deal with this and I got to go and you do it, right? But if there's all of a sudden they're like, oh, you know what? You're getting a, a new iPhone and you're going to have way less money a month. And then all of a sudden the deal becomes way more valuable. That's when you're going to make the jump. And the same thing works for realtors. You have to show more than just a little bit more value you, you got to show them enough that where they're like they can't they can't just stick with it they have all right shane i'm going to transition over now so for those of you that know i think we almost have six thousand people now that sign up for our coaching on tuesdays we get dozens almost hundreds of calls not quite hundreds but dozens of appointments that people want to book every single week with us so now we've decided to change it up this year so for those of you, it's your first time. This is now where I go in. If, 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 if anybody wants to leave, feel free to take off. We're going to dive into our coaching program, how you get like $30,000 of value for free when you partner up with us at eXp. So we're going to transition over there. Again, the reason for the transition is 
We just have too many people that book calls with us. We're just trying to hyper-focus on that. So for us, what's very important is we're going to keep dropping this knowledge all the time. For those of you that aren't just interested in EXP or coaching, feel free to leave, take off right now. For those of you who have always been curious about EXP, I don't explain it too much, to be honest. I mostly just explain our coaching right now. So what entails our coaching, how we have coaches like Shane uh, and everybody else helping us at all times. So I am going to cancel your presentation, Shane. And I hope it's this one because we just started last week. Then I decided to randomly go to the Super Bowl. <laughs> all right. So some people are wondering what double income coaching is. So for those of you who are new, this is your first time and maybe you showed up a little bit late. Again, my name is Brad Vanderwall. Used to run the number one team at the number one REMAX office in the whole world. Uh, started this coaching program. It's free every single Tuesday. Uh, there's lots of people that partner up with us all across the world uh, with the XP and come in for our coaches. We have 15 different coaches that teach 15 different topics uh, and it keeps going on from there. So with double income coaching, you get digital president, NAEA, and our live coaching. I think if you guys like this live coaching, that's a huge advantage of what people have that are business partners is that starting the beginning of March, every day, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday at 9 a.m. Mountain Standard Time, we're actually going to be helping agents teaching different things. So for those of you, this is your first time. We have a YouTube coach, a TikTok coach, and I'll kind of be going over that here in a second. One thing I love, though, about Digital President is that it's all uh, video based. So everything is video based. You can come in and learn on your own time. Plus, again, you have 15 coaches that come in. So we teach Facebook ads and strategies, basically how to run ads if that's what you're looking for, how to get free leads, video creation and marketing, uh, dominating listings. You know, Shane coming in here, it's huge. Thanks, Vicky. Love you too. Thanks for coming here. Uh, Fizbo's expired, email marketing, agent attraction, team growth, and so much more. So there's a lot of people on this call that are part of our organization too. So if you have any questions about our organization, make sure you ask them in there and what it looks like. Digital president, this is the number one thing we have. Shane talked about how great Facebook Marketplace is. This is a 90-minute training that teaches you how to get Facebook Marketplace leads. Shane, I know you weren't doing this before a bunch, but I know you started incorporating it about a week ago. How many buyer leads would you say you're getting a, a day now, right now? Oh, <laughs> it's insane insane like i it's been less than a week and i bet you there was there's 500 leads came through yeah it's nuts and shane just so you know i know you're new to this we made a decision we don't send out our scripts anymore so don't email shane because we're not going to send it to you you have to partner up with us that's something we change because it's thousands of people that it just bogs down the system it's just if you're serious great if not keep coming back on tuesdays and watch the replay so just a heads up so again, those of you that want to book a strategy call, I'm already getting texts right now. So I know there's a bunch of people looking to do it. So what Digital President is, again, this one's free. How many leads do you say you got again, Shane? I blacked out. Oh, so in less than a week, I, I bet there's over 500 leads and I wasn't even paying for these ones. Yeah, so 500 leads in a week. Like, how do you even keep up with that? I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm like, I don't see how anybody's keeping up with that. We got to talk about that. We'll talk, I haven't talked to you. I, I knew you were getting a lot, but we'll uh, we'll definitely touch base about that. Yeah. So it's digital present. Everything is in here. So the truth is, it is joining us at EXP, full disclosure. So for those of you that are not interested, again, you can leave. If you want to learn about why we were the number one team at the number one REMAX office in the world and left EXP, it's so I could start this coaching program and help agents all across North America. Shane, you said you did 90 deals last year. Uh, this year, what, what do you think you're going to do this year? Uh, well, with the, with doing these buyer leads now, I, I, I feel like that number is for sure going to be a higher volume than that. Like I'm, I'm hoping, I'm hoping for 120. I went from, I went from 60, I went from 60 to 90 to hopefully go to 120 here. So I think the biggest thing in Shane, you've been part of the team for how long now? Our Calgary team. Four years. Four years. That sounds about right. Yeah. And then what have you found the biggest? So you've seen us progress from this fucking fucked up vision I had to now it's here. And what's what's one of the things that you like about it? Because you're you're one of the coaches, but not only are you one of the coaches, you practice it all the time, but you also practice what other coaches come in and teach as well, too, right? Well, I guess what I love about it is it's it's a team 
but you get to run the business the way you want to run a business because so many people join teams and then they're like, you need to do this, 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 and it's regimented. And if you don't do exactly what they say, then they kick you off that team, right? With what we have, it's like, what do you want to do? What do you like? We've got tons of different ways to do lead generation. We've got tons of ways to do business. Pick which ones you like, get really good at them. And then you can add another piece. Like, for example, like I've added in with uh, with some of those buyer leads now, right? That's yep. how I'm going to scale my business because you know what? I've got systems in place. I've got really good at the systems I was doing. Now I'm going to add in another way to make money, right? And, and that's what I love is it's it's still running my own business though. Like you're never telling me, Shane, you have to do this or you have to do that. I get to pick and choose what it is that I want to work on. And then I can just dive into that, get really good. I've got all the support I need. I've got scripts. I've got the marketing. I've got the training. I can get really, really good at that. And then I'm going to be like, okay, you know what? I'm going to add in another piece that's going to make me more money this year. And, and that's that's the fun part about this is it's not just, oh, you know what? We're a one-trick pony. Here's online leads. Get going on it. Like, forget that. Like, it's not... It's not a one trick pony. You got a million different things you can choose from and you've got support on all of them. And then you can just get really good at it and start making more money on the other pieces. Well, I think too, like you look at some of our coaches, right? And again, I don't know. I don't preach to know everything. And I don't fucking know everything. I know a lot about real estate, but <clears throat> you know, Mark Brazil teaches new construction. So some people are asking, well, I want to get a bunch of builders and listings. Come talk to Mark. You know, he's in a big group chat on us and Microsoft Teams. Then now we're starting a whole Facebook group. Come by and check all this stuff out, right? Come by and ask from these people. It's absolutely free. And the truth is like, this is what I tell people. And there's hundreds of people that have joined us now. I think it's one of those things where I'm serious. What is your brokerage doing for you right now? And remember Shane, we said we'd never, ever leave Remax Central in a million years. Now you can oh, pay a million dollars to go back. Like you well, can pay a million dollars to go back to Remax. Well, and here I got, I got something I thought was kind of funny because every year at Remax, we'd be, top teams or whatever and i would get like a little a little plaque at the end of the year right this year this last year at exp after having a really good year i got eight thousand dollars worth of stock i still got a shitty trophy for me oh. you know see oh. so if you still and want one, i still I got, got a trophy too. yeah so <laughs> not only do i get mine was 16 not only do we get sixteen thousand dollars back from exp which i can put in the bank i still get a trophy that nobody cares about I can't deposit this in the bank, though. That's the difference. But I still get the money I could deposit in the bank, which was awesome. You do cuddle it at night, though. This one, no. The money, I do. <laughs> <laughs> then we talk about Steve Dubé, who has retirement. He does gets a lot of listings from retirement communities. Christian made $120,000 from TikTok. Uh, Gustavo talks about how he did 30 deals just from his database, but he also owns an ISA company. So talking about leveraging ISA. Ryan teaches you the simple terms of how to optimize your YouTube channel. Walter does cold calling and time management. Robert teaches how to get buyers and sellers from Facebook groups. Christian, I can't wait for this one to come up. He teaches how to grow your business with virtual assistants. Steph talks about mental health. Levi talks about YouTube and Travis too. So Levi and YouTube are, are uh, Levi and Travis are YouTube coaches. I want, and for the people that know, please don't answer this. But they started their YouTube channel about 15 months ago. They were both brand new agents. Guess how much they made their first year organically from YouTube. Take a guess in volume, in dollars, what their commission was. And they didn't sell their first house until April. If you know, please don't answer. If you don't know, please take a guess at what it is. And for those of you that are asking, I got a couple private messages, how to find out information about EXP or partnering with us. Again, that is my direct cell phone. If you have any questions, feel free to text me. I'll bring you, I'll, uh, we'll kind of catch you up to speed on what's going on. Uh, or you can click on the link and book a strategy call. So again, take a guess at how much money they made literally their first year by doing this. Wrong answers only. Yes. Two million? That'd be sick, but that's a good guess. Everybody's shy. There's still like, there's always, there's always hundreds of people at the end and people are just super shy. 
Sometimes it takes a while to kick in. All right. For time purposes, I'll keep going. But anyways, take a guess and then I'll, I'll come back and answer. So the cool thing is when you partner up with us, you literally get live coaching every single day starting in March. Now, a boatload. That's correct. Now, here's the thing about this. Again, if you're at a brokerage and you're happy, fantastic. But if your brokerage isn't offering you what's ahead of you, you have to pay your broker or a broker anyways, no matter what. Every single person here has to pay a brokerage. doesn't matter where you're at unless you own the brokerage and you have something like that. So the big part is that you have to pay anyways. The brokerage job is to keep you out of jail. Our job here at Double Your Income Coaching, powered by EXP, is to make you money or to give you back more time, how to grow a team. I'm on a call with somebody, I think she popped off, I'm not going to mention her name, who's looking to grow a team, looking to take a step back. Well, she's already doing great, 50 or 60 deals, has three or four people on her team. We're getting on a Zoom tomorrow, and she's like, how am I going to blow up a team? She's like, I want to blow up a team, but I don't know how. It's like, well, I've blown up six of them. I fucked up on three. You know, it's best that three, those three that I messed up on, Shane was a part of it. I wouldn't even say we messed up. You moved back here. Um, but it's one of those things where it's like, we're going to make mistakes. We have coaches that are there for you 24 seven. So you have myself again, Mark, Shane, another Shane, Levi who does YouTube, Christian, Steph, Matt, Walt, all these people are all of our coaches that literally help you Monday to Friday. I would love somebody to post in here. Whose brokerage, take your time, whose brokerage is live coaching besides EXP? Because there's all the EXP stuff too. But whose brokerage is live coaching from a different coach every single day of the week that teaches you a different way to make money? I'm curious if that exists out there. Every single day. Uh, Raman, yes, we do have a coach that is in the GTA and we do have a senior a senior person that's in the GTA. The answer is yes to that. We actually have a few people, actually many people that are in the GTA, but one person in particular. One person in particular, used to, she opened up her own brokerage and then switched to come with us because she's like, I can't compete with all this stuff. She's like, I'm just going to join these guys. So, uh, Honey Badger Nation is a group of everybody that's in our upline. There's like, 15,000 people that are part of Honey Badger Nation. Uh, that's with like Jay Kinder, Mike Reese. Uh, we have access to their Facebook page. They have training too. Thousands of fucking leads go through there like crazy. Just referral every 10 minutes. It seems like there's a referral for somewhere in North America. That Honey Badger Nation thing is pretty crazy. And I think that this is so, here's the thing. You know what? It's, and this is what we're starting in March 1st. Um, we're going to have, we're going to have a value. You can do whatever you want. So, there's daily coaching with us, which is going to be $9.97. Uh, the YouTube course that Levi has on how they made a million dollars. So the answer is they did $1.1 million with that. Um, they take that and then it's $1.1 million that they made on a $4,000 course. We have the National Association of Expert Advisors. We have Digital President. Uh, we have Facebook and Lead Gen. So all the stuff here that we have, this is actually like, I fucking hate it when people put, it, like, it's like I'm stupid. It's like, 997 now only 99 bucks or whatever it is these are like the actual prices of what stuff is or the actual prices of what the coaching is going to be so for some people that are like nah, i don't want to come to exp that's okay but if you just want to pay for our live coaching every day that's going to start in march we'll have more information in the next couple of weeks but if you notice shane there is still right at this time an hour and 10 minutes left there's still 78 people on this phone call okay 78 people and not one person said that their brokerage had what we had I asked, not one person said there was training every single day for, for that a coach teaches them something different. So I'm asking you, what is your brokerage actually doing for you? And a lot of people are like, but I'm loyal to my broker. I was fucking loyal to my broker. I bought him a $250 bottle of wine and cried. And then I was, but then I left because I'm making more money, getting more time and helping more people. I know, I get it. People are loyal to their brokerage. But what has your brokerage actually done for you? We're having a guy, and Shane, you don't even know this. I'm not going to mention his name yet. We're having a guy that's been at Remax for 27 years. His broker is basically his best friend, and he's coming with us next week, and he's in Calgary. If I told you his name, Shane, you'd be like, whoa. So it's like, it happens, right? Uh, I got asked for my phone number again. So for those that want to book a direct call, find out about EXP and the coaching. 
there's a two ways you can book a strategy call. Somebody from my team will call. Uh, just book it in the calendar, whatever comes up. And then there's my personal cell phone. Some people want to talk to me directly. Maybe they don't want to talk to somebody necessarily from the team at this point, but would like to come to me directly. Go ahead. Uh, and Shane, why don't you maybe talk about, you know, what else, where the vision is um, and everything. Plus, actually, I'm going to go over this first. Plus, you get all the benefits of eXp Realty. You get low monthly fees, competitive commission splits, 50 hours a week of line training for eXp, revenue share for those that are interested, stock rewards to help with your retirement, a free CRM, IDX website, healthcare plans for our American friends, if that's what you're looking for, Icon Awards. See the best part about this Icon Award? 16 grand and an award. And I think that 16 grand is now worth about 24. So, you know, it's there. If you are a top producing agent selling like 30 a year and you're not with EXP, you literally need to give your head a shake. Because if you did that, you'd get your stock back. The 10, the, if, if I would have been at EXP the last 10 years, I'd be worth millions because of all the stock that I'd be getting back. Even if, even if the stock stays the same for the next 10 years, that's $160,000 extra you'll have compared to wherever you're at. And truthfully, some people are like, well, Brad, my fees are a little bit less. Okay. But if I could sit there and show you how to do an extra 5, 10, 20, 30, however many houses you want to sell, does it really matter if over here you're saving eight grand when there's so much more value over here? It's, it's one house a year. And I mean, just, I know just getting on the, the, the Facebook leads that, that you guys showed me, like that's easily, that's two deals a month. Yep. That, 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 and it's not a lot of work. It's two deals a month and it doesn't cost me anything more. And you're like, okay, but I could save, I don't know, $500 a month by going somewhere else. Okay. Well, I just lost out on $58,000 <laughs> by saving a little bit, right? Like it just doesn't, you, you got to give your head a shake. Like it, it's about the amount of deals you can do. It's about the money you can make. It's the support. And the thing is, honestly, the network of people that you've got that are able to help, you don't have to just follow what we do. You guys get to be creative as well. And then there's the tools and the people in place that can take and help make your vision into something that actually works. Like with, with a guy like Christian, right? I'm like, I need to start automating some of my stuff. And now I'm, I'm more productive. I have more time by being able to leverage the people that, that you have in the organization. Like there's no way that I could sell more houses this year than I did last year, unless I was able to automate some things. And, and that's what having that network of people, I don't have to go out. If, if right now, if you're like Shane, you need to go find the VA and you need to go do all this stuff and figure it out. Like yeah, I like, just, I'm just, I'm just not going to sell as many houses. <laughs> like, there's true. no way like yeah right you just get overwhelmed but when you've got a team of support behind you that you could be like look here's the problem that i have and this is what i want to do and they can be like this is who you have to talk to here we're going to get them in touch with you and and then it just it it like magically happens <laughs> i know it's not just magically happening but as an agent that's what it feels like and and that's what that's what most of us need if you're good at sales you're probably terrible at some of the back end stuff, like Brad, how how good are you at uh, doing website stuff? I you you get old. I've never input a listing. <laughs> how many thousands of homes as a team? If you held a gun to my head and said input a listing, I've never done it. Like, but I need people's help to to have what I'm bad at. Like Christian, for example, the person we're talking about, he has a company that hires virtual assistants. Now my social media is starting to blow up on my YouTube channel because of that fact, right? Because of the fact that I have somebody that I can leverage, but I wouldn't know where to go. I, I don't know where to go find a VA. I don't want to train the VA. Well, another thing is like people throw away money chasing the new thing all the time. When they, when they partner with us, we've already thrown all the money away at things <laughs> that didn't work. Exactly. So we can let them know, look, we, we can verify it. if we're bringing a lead source, we know it works. Because we, we're never going to bring something to people unless we're doing it and it works. It's like we, you, you, if you want to ask Brad how, how to waste money in real estate, then I mean, he could write a book on it. Oh, dude, absolutely. That book, maybe that's how I break even for all the shit that I lost. So we'll open up to a few Q and A's here for about EXP and about the coaching. So feel free. I asked this, we did it the first time. 
I ask people, why wouldn't you join us? So I don't, I don't, people that know me well enough, there's an elephant in the room. I had a couple of people that they, they didn't really have much to say. There's still, you know, at the end of this, it's been an hour and 15 minutes. There's still 63 of you on here. Why wouldn't some of you join us at EXP? Are you scared, nervous? What is it? What's reasons why you would not join us at EXP and get all of our coaching for free? Keep in mind, you got to pay brokerage fees anyways. Why not just come and get more value? So what's a reason why somebody, somebody pipe up? What's a couple of reasons why you wouldn't join us? Maybe we can answer some questions for you. You weren't on this one last time, Shane. There was 48 people on and not one, like one person said, because it's virtual. But then I explained it. Then they called me and they wanted to join. All right. Looking for one, looking for one new agent. Um, uh, you want to elaborate on that? The cost to hop over is, is the cost to hop over is only like 150 bucks. So it's not, it's not that bad. Getting free leads from your brokerage and EXP doesn't have an office. I don't know of any, many people that use an office. So um, EXP uses offices. So you guys still remember this whole pandemic thing and COVID and now nobody goes to the office. I have an, I have 37 agents, literally 37 agents on my team. Three of them come in the office. I'm literally getting rid of my office in a year and a half because there's no point. I have 37 agents that are on my team and maybe three people are in the office. But and the other reason why I'm doing it is because EXP's partnered up with Regis and Regis is basically it's Regis is a free office you can get all across the world so you can go to Regis so now like when I'm in LA I can go to Regis office I can go anywhere in the world that Regis offices are and do some work if I want so the in-office thing that the way to solve that is seriously with Regis I find that that not having going into the office just makes me way more efficient it, is it, it, most it used to be, it was the water, it was the water cooler talk. It was exactly. the like, wasted time stuff of, you know, agents sitting there and moaning about how they're not selling houses or like, I, I just find that I'm way more efficient and it, it just, it doesn't, uh, it's the way we consume things now, right? Like, this is how we consume all our entertainment. It's all online. It, that this is how, this is how the world operates now. And I just find that, this is the way your leads want to interact as well. And that's why things like Maddie's getting buyers signed up over Zoom. I mean, people have realized how much more efficient it is to learn this stuff up front before. Like, I would rather do, if, if I was sitting at home, I would show up to a Zoom call with someone and they go over 30 minutes of, of how to, to buy a house rather than driving down to Starbucks and having to meet them the first time and then find out I don't like them. Because if I don't like them after, you know, not leaving my house on the Zoom, then then I'm done with it and it's fine, right? Like that's how the world wants to interact with you. And it's, it's time that people start to, to do that because we have to communicate with your clients on the medium that they want to communicate on. And it's going to be on things like this. They're going to want to meet virtually and then move to, to physical uh physical interaction <laughs> <laughs> i get what you're saying but it's what it's point, and that's what it is and this is the funny thing and i love this one that tom just said exp in our market has a reputation there the recruiting business and not the real estate business tom did you hear how many houses i sold last month with my team just in calgary alone 335 in one month some of the top agents in the world are with exp however let's say they are in the recruiting business Name me a brokerage that isn't in the recruiting business. How did my old Remax brokerage go from two people to 250 by recruiting agents? This is I, what I get a phone call or email every every, every day. day I get a phone brokerage. call or an email. Yep. I get some brokerage. kind of brokerage call from Coldwell Banker, Century 21, all the time. Here's the one thing I would explain with that is at Remax, what they would do is they would go they would hire another company. They would take a bunch of the fees that you're paying. They would go hire an outside company to go and recruit for them. EXP, instead of taking that money from me and giving it to some other company, is just sharing it back to the agents that are successful with recruiting more people. That's the difference. The money is just not leaving the agent's hand and going out to outside recruiters. 
Well, Shane, I'm going to put you on the spot. You were the least pumped, I think, of the group. Maybe Herc, but you were the least pumped. One of the least pumped people to come into EXP. And it took you a few months to get going. What's your hesitation? What's the difference? And I'm, I've never asked you this. You can verify as we've been buddies for fucking years in my wedding party. One of my best friends, he was hesitant, didn't really want to come to EXP. So what was yours? Like, I've never asked you, to be honest. I, our marketplace, Remax had a, had a huge market share. And I was like, I need the balloon. <laughs> right? Um, that was part of it. Uh, it was something new. And it was, it seemed like it was moving very quickly. And, and I was like, I need to understand this more. But um, once I truly understood how it works, it, it's, it's like a no brainer, right? But in the beginning, sometimes it's like, it, and I think we come with too much information sometimes when we're like revenue share and stock plans and all these things and healthcare. And, and a lot of times people are just like, I just want to sell more houses, right? Like not every, there's, what I find is EXP has built a brokerage that is great for people that are brand new. It's great for people that want to scale and have teams. It's great for people that are top producers because they've got so many different ways of rewarding agents that it's good for all these different ones. But I think sometimes if you're a new agent and you're like, I sold five houses last year, I want to sell 15 this year. I think we overwhelm them with a lot of that information about EXP. The truth is there's stuff in here to help grow your business. And when you get to a point where you're like, okay, now I want to scale to having a team or, you know what? I want to start recruiting or I want to do this. Those tools are there, but you don't need to know them all in the beginning. You can focus on your business and start growing your business, selling more houses. And then as your career goes on, you get to a point where you're like, I need to think about retirement. You know, I'm, I'm over 40 now and it's a thought, right? Five years ago, I didn't care about having any kind of retirement plan, right? But now I've got to a point in my career where it's more important to me. And it's there for me with EXP, where it wouldn't be if I had stayed at Remax, I just wouldn't have an option, right? And, and that's what I find with it is don't overwhelm yourself with, there's so many different great things about the business pick what it is that's going to help you in the situation you're in right now, learn that, get better at that, and then move on to the next phase of your career and where you can integrate some of the great things EXP has, but don't overwhelm yourself and start worrying about stock and different things. If that's not where you're at in your career, the stuff is there to help you grow your business. And when it gets bigger and when it gets to a point where you're happy, there's going to be more tools for you to unlock later on. That's awesome advice. Raman asked, uh, Regis is great. Can we get a better price if we're in your team? Uh, Raman, I'll be honest with you. It's free for everybody, my team or not. So whenever you partner up with the EXP, uh, you get to go to Regis. And that's what I love about it to you. All right, Cash, thanks. Yeah, we're completely different. It's not free leads. We can show you how to get free leads. It's a full coaching program. It's everything. So once you kind of get a better understanding of everything, Rakesh, just keep coming back. You know, next week we teach how to get listings from retirement communities. We have something new every week. Uh, you know, the coaching every day is going to be pretty exciting. So ours is completely different. We do show you how to get free leads, uh, but that's only one avenue. You know that how hard it is to get, you know how hard it is to close a lead? You have a 2% chance. Or would you rather come in and have a higher conversion rate and not have to spend any money? So free leads are going to be a thing of the past. That's why places like Zolo and Toronto uh, there's a lot of agents looking at different at different avenues because in Zolo and different brokerages, you got to pay like 30, 40, 50, 60 percent to them. The leads are free, but you still got to put up 50 percent. How about I just show you how to set up the leads? You spend 500 bucks a month. You get hundreds of them. You close one and you're ahead. Like it's the knowledge of how to do it that makes it scalable and makes it ex like accessible. So anybody that's coming by and just saying, oh, I'll give you free leads. Who gives a shit? I'll show you how to set up, set it up. So think about that. If you're giving somebody free leads and let's say you're getting their free leads, this is how fucked up things are. Yes, they're free leads. Okay, but then they take 50%, 30%, whatever the number is. Let's say 40%. They take 40% and let's say you close one a month. So that's, let's just say it's the average is 10 grand. So they take $50,000 from you a year, sending a 40% referral. Or you join us 
Our marketing department shows you how to do it. In some cases, even sets you up for it. You spend $500 a month. So it only costs you six grand. Well, I would rather you're spending $50,000 getting free leads, or I can show you how to do the exact same thing for six grand. It's just a lot of people don't understand it. So they don't want to look into doing it, but we have a one-stop shop for everything. Uh, commercial properties. I'm not sure. We do commercial real estate. If that's what you mean, Rakesh, absolutely. We do, uh, we do, we do commercial. We have commercial realtors all across all. Honestly, Rakesh, all across North America. We have real, uh, we have one of our predominant ones is in uh, California. We have another one that's in Washington, D.C. Uh, so we have a ton. And we're going to eventually have a commercial division uh, probably in the next two to three months or a commercial coach. Sorry. But, yeah, you can do commercial. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. If getting leads from the brokerage was all it took to be successful, then everyone at that brokerage would be a top producing agent. Right. And the truth is there's a handful at the top that are great. There's a whole bunch in the middle that do average. And then a ton that barely sell anything at most brokerages, right? And so if free leads were the answer, I mean, every one of that brokerage would be crushing it. And we know that's not true because it's a lot more than just getting free leads to, to become successful in this business. And the thing is, what if Google changes an algorithm? Facebook changes something. What was what those free leads dry up? What are you going to do with your business? What else are you going to do? You have to have, you can't be a one trick pony. I mean, I've seen, I mean, there's an agent I know in Calgary. He used to have a, a big team. It was super busy. A couple tweaks of, of websites and stuff. And now, I mean, I barely see his name anymore. Yeah, I know exactly who you're talking about too. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, Rakesh, I'll find your number and I'll reach out. Uh, let me try. I'm just going to add him here. All right, guys, there's still 51 of you on here. I know my man, Brian Howard's on here. I just saw you. I just uh, checked to see who's on here. So, oh, Rakesh just texted me. Will buzz me later. Cool. There's a, yeah, see, there's a, bu there's a bunch of people here that are starting to text me. Yeah, I got it, Rakesh. I saw it. I'll call you. So I think the most important thing is, is kind of this, and I kind of got to go because I have a bunch of agents that I'm actually meeting in my office. So what's your brokerage doing for you? And if your answer is nothing, what's the worst thing? If you joined us at EXP and let's say you thought it fucking sucked, you can still go back, right? Like the worst case scenario is, oh my God, well, what if this doesn't work? Then go back. But most of you are here. There's still 48 of you on here that have listened to the EXP spiel or about the coaching. So you obviously have some interest, it, right? Your, broker, your brokers will probably offer you some incentive to come back even. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Leave and ask for an incentive to come back. Exactly. That's a good idea. Right. So like put it in there. I know we can make a difference in your guys's coaching. I know we can make a difference for your, for your family life. This is what we do. Hundreds and hundreds of agents, 6,000 agents are on these calls every Tuesday. Well, no, they don't all show up, but they're registered. So, um, thanks, Brian. Hope you're well, man. Um, to prove a point, love Brian. Brian's a fellow EXP agent, not in my downline. And Brian, I hate to tell you this, but it's true. There's EXP agents that are here that literally come to my coaching. Why aren't they getting that from their upline? Because we're doing something completely different than nobody else is on the planet. We have tons of EXP agents that come here. One in five of the, so I've, this is when I knew that we were onto something. And this is nothing to do against any other EXP agents or their uplines is just factual numbers. Is that of the 6,000 people that have signed up for our coaching, one in five are already with EXP. What does that tell you? We're doing something that nobody else is at EXP. If one in five people are already with EXP, not in our downline, they keep coming back. How do I switch to your downline? How can I move? I love EXP, but you offer so much more. We hear it all the time. So anyways, I hope you guys have joined us. I hope you guys have booked a call. Thanks for, uh, thanks for listening and thanks for learning. It's going to be like this every week, just so you guys know. And one day there'll be a day where you're like, you know what? Fuck it. I'm coming to EXP and we just want you to think of us. Thanks, Ivan. I think we have a phone call uh, this afternoon, I hope. So thanks for everything. I got a couple minutes here left, guys. I'm going to stay on for Shane. You got two more minutes and then we'll bounce. I'll take that as a yes. I think he froze or else he's just doing his best modeling pose. <laughs> no, my sound went away. 
Uh, I just got an offer. Any questions? Any questions? No questions? I have a question. What happened to the guy in the picture there? That guy? <laughs> That's a while ago, man. I can get I don't know if I could get I think I could get back there actually. I need about oof. I think I need about two months. Okay. I can get there. You and you and Steve, when I saw Steve and then I saw you, I'm like, fuck this. I can't be the worst physical specimen on the team anymore. So <laughs> I, uh, I gotta make, I gotta make a little change. I was doing great. I didn't drink for two weeks and worked out almost every day, but then the Super Bowl kicked my ass. And now today's day one again. No questions. No questions. Everybody. No. All right. Well, there's still a bunch of you on here, but I got to run to the office. We got a bunch of people joining us today in Calgary. So super exciting day. So thanks everybody for being here. I will see you next Tuesday. If I'm not mistaken, I think next Tuesday is how to get listings from retirement communities. One of my favorite things that we teach. So see everybody there. Shane, I appreciate you. Maybe one day we can hang out. It feels like yeah. it's been forever. So I'm going to Edmonton this weekend. You should come along. I actually, are you going by yourself or is it for a hockey team? No, the family we're going up. That's tough. I'm going to look for more builders. So potentially. <laughs> okay. All right, guys. See you around. Yeah. Thanks. Bye.